Today's video is sponsored by Bark. Raising and training a confident dog is one of the most powerful ways to get our dogs to do anything that we want them to do. And that is what we're gonna be showing you today. They picked an interesting time to get the zoomies, didn't they? I wanna tell you things that I look for in an amazing dog toy that will actually help accelerate your training. If our dogs are feeling good up here, there's nothing we can't teach them. First thing we have to ask ourselves is what kind of toys do our specific dogs like? I know my dog, Inertia, loves toys with dangly bits on them. There's a fish inside the coral toy. So you play with that one, you play with that one. And you've got to consider the textures they like. Do they like hard toys, soft toys, or both? These are well-made toys. I am really trying to rip that apart. So super chewers for dogs who are going to have a huge bite. This is actually a super chewer toy. Even though I've started to cut it, I mean, I still can't. Look at that. This is on there. Let's say that it does eventually come off and you get this kind of toy, these just last forever. But you can put things in here. Notice the unique texture, nice bounce to it. Bark makes some of the best dog toys in the business. And they make getting toys that your dog is going to like effortless by sending them every month. In a box, you have everything you need to boost those brain chemicals in your dog to propel your training into the stratosphere. You can get a completely free box to see if it's for your dog. Go to BarkBox.com slash dog training or SuperChewer.com slash dog training. Links below. There's there's like a handful of times in your life where you just find yourself in a new place and you're like, where am I? This is so alien to me. There's literally some type of crazy animal moving around under the surface. Mystery animal. And there's lots of them. This is not an environment that I've trained extensively in. So my dog training brain is detecting like major proofing exercises here, which is way more exciting than it sounds. In our last episode, we easily taught Veronica how to do a super flashy trick called the backstall. When last we visited the concept of backstall, Veronica was doing terrific with it. She was jumping on your back in the redwood forest. It was great. I'm curious to see if she's retained that because we've only had that one session. That was just a couple of days ago. One thing I would like to do in pretty short order with the backstall is to get her to work for a frisbee. In other words, I'm hoping the promise of chasing a rolling frisbee or a flying frisbee in the air will be enough motivation for her to want to do this task. Let's just see where we are with it. Good, yes, we'll give her a reminder there. We'll go ahead and say, hey, I like that you tried that. Catch it, good. Before we approach any training issue, we need to consider what our dog's mental like state that. is throughout the training process and try to keep that as optimal as possible. Good, ready? What's this? Do you remember? That's good. Yeah, look at that. After all, when a dog learns to jump on something and balance and stay there, and we have the foresight to reinforce those events that we wish to see repeated, we just can't help but make them more secure, confident beings. Give her a nice big reward there. That was chase great. The frisbee. And one of my immediate goals with Veronica is to get her generalizing this skill, not just for treats like we used in her only lesson on this so far, but for a frisbee. Good, <laughs> nice, and ready. Cool. I can feel her jump, it's really cute. Yeah, isn't that nice? She's like, okay. Yes, stall. Good girl. Yeah, good girl, get it, get it, take it. Yeah, now have her get, get down. Tuck, tuck, tuck. That's okay. good. I like how you're finding a reason yeah. to reward her while she's up there, so nice tug. Go okay. ahead and, yes. When a dog lands on your back with all four feet and you can feel them up there balancing on you and trusting you. Good. How did that feel? Great, That's yes. That's the first time you've had her ever do that. Yeah. When you've asked for it. Yeah. And you have to be in sync with your dog. There's just something so metaphoric about it. I felt like she trusts me. I wasn't really expecting her to trust me that much. I find dog training to be the most fulfilling when you look at it as a partnership between you and your dog. Like any partnership, you're usually trying to build something great and memorable. We are people, they are dogs. We can easily keep a dog happy with minimal effort as long as we make a good faith effort to do so. The fact that she was able to take direction from you that quick She's a smart dog. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. It's sometimes difficult for a dog to generalize taking direction from one person, in this case me, and then another person, in this case you, in a completely different position. Yes! Yes! Dog. yes. Get it! Good oh, girl! Sorry. Get it! Get it! Get it! Get it! Take it! Okay, get down! Show her where? By rolling it gently okay. that way. That's it. Good that girl! That dismount is kind of important. Why inserts. is it important? because we really want to know exactly where she's going to land and we want to be able to set her up to land on a good surface. Maybe there's rocks over here or glass, I don't know. Yeah. You know, because you're looking right there, that's a good spot to land in. Let's put her right there. One of the hidden benefits 
here is that we're working on yet a stay while you're in this completely weird position. That's beneficial. Our dogs need to know how to stay beyond a standard sit and stay, for example. So here you're having her stay while behind you. Let me see if she'll do it for me. To this point, Veronica has not done a back stall on my back. So, I mean, what am I even? I can't go on another moment without experiencing this. Yes! Look at that, a little higher. Oh my goodness! Good girl, Veronica! I'm curious, how many of you live in a household where the dog is more likely to listen to one specific person or not listen to a specific person? Tell me in the comments below. This little game that Bree is playing with Veronica is a brilliant idea. I'm playing this game with Veronica right now where Every time she comes up to me on her own, I'm giving her a treat. Yeah. That's the game. And it's the best. So far, I've, I've done it for just a couple of minutes and already the amount that she's coming up to me is dramatically increasing. It's amazing. Hey, yeah. Bree is capturing the organic recall from Veronica. There's absolutely no way for the dog to fail while you're teaching them how to do this. Anything that you want to see repeated, right? You reinforce with something they like. In this case, you're giving her a treat, some playtime with the water, and just generally an awesome time. So if you just simply say, come, when your dog is running to you naturally, even if it's during a game of fetch, you're teaching them how to understand this concept while doing it in an enthusiastic state of mind. And that combination is super powerful. Yes, good. Do your best to acknowledge when your dog does something you like out of the blue. Try to be one step ahead of your dog. Every one of you can do that. I am mostly confident. Inertia, come. Nurse's recall continues to be great in public places. But we can pass here. As we continued on our walk, we came across this small stream that led to the ocean. Veronica walked right through it, no problem at all. However, inertia was more cautious. I can see that inertia is really apprehensive about crossing and getting to us. I can also see in her eyes that it looks like she's not ready to totally give up. Maybe if I get more energetic and exciting, maybe that might encourage her to do it. Yeah! Well, that seemed to work, so when in doubt, just act like you've lost your mind. If you can read your dog and they look like they're going to do something, give them the opportunity to problem solve and brainstorm for a little bit. Because there's a great chance they're going to do exactly what you want. But there is the matter of getting back over the water, so is she likely to do it again? I tried to reinforce her. I gave her an extra big treat, lots of love, and just encouraged her to keep enjoying her environment. Remember, the environment serves as reinforcement too. And we've really established how much these dogs seem to find enjoyment in exploring new places. We need to get back over that stream, and I'm serious, before it fills up with water and we're trapped. But this is I'm so- I'm not climbing that cliff. Ah! <laughs> looking for her treat. He said the reinforcement worked just like last time. Much faster the second time around. I mean, sometimes that first attempt is the hardest because you can see on the second attempt, she hesitated a little bit, but she quickly figured it out. And she's like, oh yeah. Took inertia off leash to let them do some zoomies and play. Okay, come. Off leash recall. Love that. Heel. Boy, you look like a trained dog. That is very good. One thing I find myself doing at these various campsites that we find ourselves at is very often working outside in the beautiful weather and invariably coming across unplanned distractions, which is such a blessing for a dog trainer. Got the dog walking by. Come. Yes. And she listens very well, but I'm not letting up on the reinforcement anytime soon. There's been so many opportunities to have these spontaneous training sessions like that. We'll have a dog walk by, we'll have birds come by and other various distractions. And I'm able to do my training with her in an outdoor environment around organic distractions. And I really try to take advantage of those. At this point in inertia's training, I like to acknowledge the presence of a dog, especially if I see the dog before she does. So I can say, hey, there's a dog, just to help prevent her from being surprised by a dog. See the dog? He can see how she'll look at the dog Girl. and then me, Stay. which I suspect means I see the dog and I'm happy to look to you for guidance, which is exactly what I'd like. I mean, there are gonna be times where she can go play with a dog and there's gonna be times when she has to ignore a dog. And I want to further proof inertia around the presence of dogs. Come. See that dog? That's right. 
Bree might say, I'm just procrastinating on editing this morning, like I'm supposed to do. I'm, I think, an hour and a half past due on what I said I would do. So, accountability. Hey, you wanna play with that ball? Catch. I mean, they've gotta get exercise still. But Zach, you already exercised her this morning. What's your point? The dog is still over there, by the way. So I'll actually take a toy under controlled conditions, toss the toy in the direction of the dog so there's nothing between her and the dog. This really helps her gain clarity and allows me to evaluate her skill level in a real world setting. So getting her to play fetch in the direction of the other dog and come back to me is also exciting. Another way that I like to test her is giving her requests while I'm significantly farther away. I think many of you might identify with the fact that when you're farther away from your dog, it's harder to communicate with them. Is the dog there? Good. Do you see the dog? Here. Good. You got a border collie stare going on over there. And Nurse has just been enjoying checking these geese out over here. She's just sniffing. She's really intrigued by them. Does she have the life experience and training to know not to go chasing after those geese? More importantly, can I call her off of the geese? She is on the long line just because we're in public. Inertia, come. Pretty pleased with that. Zach's flying the drone right now and I just noticed Inertia being so good with these birds, all within reachable distance of her. Leave them alone. Good girl. She's being good. Zach just called her because all he heard was me talking to her and saying her name. So maybe it's a good idea for us to ask ourselves, where can we practice our training in real life? Where can we have opportunities to work with our dogs in a way that's likely to translate into listening to us in the real world as opposed to like a really set up structured training session? Simply by immersing yourself in the real world, you're able to do this type of training a lot more. Now, you don't have to drop everything to travel around North America like we're doing to do this. We've shown you in other series where we do this in local parks. And I would say, especially when you have a younger dog, your social time in large part needs to be devoted to taking your dog to a park for three, four hours, a couple of times a week. And those tail events or those unpredicted events start to stack up and give your dog experience. And that's where they start to generalize listening to you everywhere. So while the physical positions of our dogs do matter in dog training, their emotional state matters more. We can both keep dogs very happy during the training process while also getting them to perform perform the physical behaviors we wish to see. And according to every relevant academic body to our profession, aversives in dog training are never required for any known instance. I think I have probably two more videos at this location. It was such a sleeper dog training set. I had no idea. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Subscribe and get a free BarkBox. I'll have a link in the description. We'll see you next time. What a good episode. I like this episode.